Hello, I'm John Tombarge, the Business Librarian here at Washington and Lee University, and I want to introduce you today to Simmons Insights. This is a database that will provide detailed consumer behavior data from Simmons National Consumer Survey, an annual survey of the buying and media habits of nearly 25,000 consumers. Keep in mind that it is a survey of adults in the U.S. Children under 18 and international consumers are not included. But why would you want to use Simmons? Well, if you want to know detailed information about people who buy a particular product or read a particular magazine, then Simmons Insights will give you this information. It will help you base your marketing decisions on consumer behavior rather than guesswork. So let's get started. To get to Simmons Insights, start at the library's website, library.wlu.edu. You can find Simmons on the database list, which lists all library databases alphabetically. Or you can navigate to the Marketing Research and Resources page by going up to the Research menu, selecting Subject and Course Guides. Under Business Administration, select Marketing Research Resources. This page lists the databases that will be most helpful when conducting marketing research. The link to Simmons Insights is on the menu to the left. And we'll connect to Simmons Insights. If you're off campus, you'll be asked to log in using your WNL credentials. Once you're connected to Simmons, the first thing you should do is select the survey you wish to investigate. Generally, I recommend the latest 12-month survey. Once the survey is selected, you can begin searching the information immediately using the Smart Search, which is the default search on this page. But the Smart Search is most helpful if you already know the information included in the survey before you start searching. If you are new to Simmons, it's most helpful to get into the dictionary to learn how the data is structured and what's included. After you're familiar with the data, you'll get better results from your use of the Smart Search option. Get into the dictionary by clicking the dictionary at the top of the page. Before we start selecting data, we should consider what we'll do with each data item. First is the base. This is the population or part of the population that we're interested in exploring. By default, we run crosstabs without a base, which means we're using the U.S. adult population as a whole as the base. If desired, we can define a base, such as only women. Selecting a base limits all responses to members of this base, so we'd only receive responses from women participants of the survey. Once you have identified your base, you can identify the target of your research, which are the consumers of products or the consumer behavior that you're interested in exploring. I recommend that you put your targets in the columns. In this case, I'm interested in people who purchase Hershey Kisses and competing products, so I'll place them in the columns. Then I'll use the rows for the demographic factors or other things I'm interested in knowing about the targets. Being consistent in where you place your data will help you interpret the results of your work. In my example today, I'm going to use the default base, which is the U.S. adult population as a whole. Now I'm ready to look for my data, and I can explore the drop-down menus and find the data I'm looking for that way. Or if I'm not sure where to start, I can search on a term or phrase or a brand name. So I'm going to search on the word Hershey. This will limit all the items retrieved to those that contain the word Hershey. And as I look through the list, I see that food, snack, dessert is the most likely option. Then chocolate and other candy. These are the options I can explore, and the one that's most interesting to me is chocolate and other candy brands eating MO, which means most often. And this will list all the chocolate brands made by Hershey. If I'm interested in all the brands made by Hershey's, I can grab the entire category and drag it over to my columns. And this will allow me to use all the different brands of Hershey products as my target. But today I'm only interested in Hershey Kisses, so I'll remove the entire list and select only Hershey Kisses and drag it to the columns. Now I'm ready to get my competing products, but my search has limited the items that are retrieved to just those containing Hershey's. So I have to go back to the menu structure to find the other competing products. So I'll just review where we're at, which is food, snack, dessert, 
and then chocolate and other candy. Chocolate and other candy brands eating most often. And I'll remove my search from my window and I'll scroll down to find food, snack, dessert. Open this up. Look for chocolate and other candy. And then chocolate and other candies brands eaten most often. And this will find all the competing products that I can choose between. As I scroll down through the list, I'm going to select Dove Promises and drag it over to the columns. And I can continue selecting different products to add to my target, but to keep this example simple, I'll stop here. Now I'm ready to go for my demographic information or the other information that I want to find out about my targets. So I'll return to the menu structure, scroll to the top, and the demographic information is found under Lifestyle Demographics, and then Demographics Personal Information. As a simple example, I will grab Gender as my demographic information and drag it over to Rows. Now we're ready to run the cross tab. So I'll come up to the arrow at the top of the screen and run the cross tab. By default, Simmons lists the information in what it refers to as private eye mode. I find it easier to switch the chart type to cross tab view. This makes it easier to interpret the results. The column headers do not show what the products are, so let's make a change there. I'll click on that, and then limit it to Hershey Kisses. and Dove Promises. Now it will be clear which products I'm interested in looking at. Now there are a lot of numbers. How do we interpret the results? There are several numbers to pay attention to here. Starting at the top, we use the vertical percent. We see that of the people who eat Hershey Kisses most, 43.1% are male. Starting at the side, we'll use the horizontal percent and we see that of females, 13.3% eat Hershey Kisses most. The other really important number is the index. The index represents the likelihood of a target to meet a specific criteria, and it is expressed in relation to the base, with 100 being the average. However, anything between 90 and 110 is considered flat. Anything less than 90 or larger than 110 is considered significant. In our example, the index value for Dove Promises for females is 133. This can be interpreted as of the people who eat Promises most, they are 33% more likely to be female than a typical member of the U.S. population. Or it can be interpreted as females are 33% more likely to eat Dove Promises most than a typical member of the U.S. population. Simmons will point out the significant indexes by displaying either a red down arrow or green up arrow to point out the direction that the index is pointing in. To get comfortable interpreting the results, you may want to come up to the Help menu and then download the Insights How to Interpret Crosstab Data document. This document will help you interpret the crosstabs and explain how the numbers are calculated. The last thing I want to show you is how to download the table in Excel spreadsheet format. So let's return to the crosstabs. Come over to the export menu, and then we can export it as an Excel spreadsheet file. With a table in Excel, you can format it however you wish to meet your needs. I hope this brief introduction to Simmons will help you get started. But if you have questions or need help, my name is John Tombarch. Please contact me.